the dark mind of two young teenagers that would strike fear and sadness across the whole country. And it would set a blueprint for all school shootings. Today we're going to look at why these students did what they did and how it would set an example for the future. This is Columbine, a history. Oh no, no! First, we'll go back and find out where the first school shooting ever happened. The first recorded document was during the Pontiac Rebellion, July 26, 1764, where four Lenape American Indians entered the schoolhouse near Greencastle, Pennsylvania, where they shot and killed schoolmaster Enoch Brown along with nine or ten kids, and only two survived. Matthew Ward brought a self-cocking pistol in the morning, then went to the school and killed schoolmaster Mr. Butler for excessively punishing his brother the day before. The last big school shooting before Columbine was on May 21st, 1998 in Springfield, Oregon, with two students killed and 22 others wounded at Thurston High School by Kip Kinkle. They later found his parents dead as well. Eric David Harris was born on April 9, 1981 in Wichita, Kansas to parents Wayne and Katherine Harris and also had a sibling named Kevin Harris. Wayne was an Air Force pilot, which required his family to move several times while Eric was a child, which was really hard on him. Eric was always the new kid on the block and it was hard for him to make friends. While living in Plattsburgh, New York, he seemed like a regular kid playing Little League. Their family moved to Littleton, Colorado in July 1993 after his dad retired from the military. Eric slowly began to change in his new hometown. He was a decent soccer player and always wore preppy style clothing, always had a hard time fitting in. Attending Ken Carley Middle School, he would meet one of his best friends who would take part in the April 20th massacre. Dylan Bennett Klebold was born September 11th, 1981 in Lakewood, Colorado. Remember that date with parents being Thomas and Susan Klebold, and he also had a brother, Byron, with Tom Klebold being a geologist. The Klebolds were pacifists and attended Lutheran churches with their children. Both Dylan and his older brother, Byron, attended confirmation classes. Dylan was named after a poet, Dylan Thomas. The Klebolds also performed rituals, keeping their Jewish heritage. Dylan would attend Normandy Elementary in Littleton, Colorado for his first two grades, before transferring to Governor's Ranch, and he became part of the CHIPS, challenging high intellectual potential students. He found the transition to Ken Carley Middle School difficult because he was always so quiet and shy. During his early years, he played t-ball and soccer, also was in Cub Scouts with his friend Brooks Brown, a boy he had been friends with since the first grade. He met Eric Harris while attending Ken Carley Middle School in 7th to 8th grade. It turned out that Brooks lived a few houses down from Eric and they rode the same bus. Not long after, Eric introduced Dylan to his friend Nate Dykeman, who also attended the middle school, and they all became good friends. During their transition to Columbine High School in 1995, Harris and Klebold turned into outcasts. During freshman year, Eric would actually go to homecoming with Tiffany Typher. After homecoming, she refused to go on any more dates with him. Later on, Eric actually faked a suicide with pretending to take a rock and smash it against his head while he laid down and put fake blood next to it. This was actually interesting because there is a movie called Harold and Maude, which Harold actually did this all the time. Dylan also tried to pursue girls, like Sasha Jacobs, where they went on one date, but she didn't want to go on anymore because she thought Dylan was strange, but she actually went out with Eric for a little bit after. Eric was volatile, while Klebold was shy and reserved. Both hated the school because of the jock culture and how they were bullied. Rocky Hofschneider was the biggest bully of the whole entire school, and he was a great above Eric and Dylan. He would pretty much get away with everything, with the teachers doing little or nothing to punish him. One instance of bullying was when Dylan was in the cafeteria and all the jocks put ketchup on tampons and they threw it at him. Freshmen Dan Lab and Brandon Larson and other jocks would bully them while they were juniors. Dylan and Eric both were computer savvy and loved playing violent video games like Duke and Doom. Eric even created some Doom levels himself. What you're watching right now is actually one of Eric's Doom levels he created. By their sophomore year of Columbine, Harrison Klebold became visibly different, dressing like the school outsider cliques, by wearing long coats and dark clothes and boots. Many mistake them for being in the trench coat mafia, 
The Trenchcoat Mafia was a group of outcast nerds who played dunces and dragons in their basements. A few members like Chris Morris and John Savage were actually friends with Eric and Dylan, even though Eric and Dylan were never part of it. Dylan was active in school play productions as light and sound coordinator and also was involved with video production for Columbine High School Rebel News. Harrison Klebold studied German and became intrigued with Hitler and the Nazis. They drew swastikas, and even in their early morning bowling classes when they would score a strike, they would do the Hail Hitler salute. Brooks Brown used to drive Eric to school every day, and one day Brooks woke up late and wasn't able to take Eric. Eric took this the wrong way and hated him. Eric eventually threw an ice ball into his windshield, cracking the glass. Eric started a website talking about what he hates and how he wants to kill as many people in Denver as he can, especially Brooks Brown. Dylan saw his website and wanted to warn his buddy Brooks, so in the hallway he told Brooks about Eric's website. So Brooks looked up Eric's website and saw that he really wanted to kill him. He brought this to his parents. The Browns took this information to the police and the police said they would look into it, but nothing was ever done. The Browns still blamed the police for the Columbine incident, saying it never would have happened if they did their job. Eric and Dylan would get a job together at Blackjack Pizza, where they worked two years before the massacre. Their friends Nate Dykeman and Chris Morris also worked at Blackjack with them. Philip Duran, a fellow co-worker, helped Eric and Dylan acquire a Tech DC-9 used in the shooting. Matt Jackson, another co-worker, introduced them to Mark Maines, who would later be arrested for providing the Tech-9 and some ammo for the gunmen to use. Eric and Dylan one day brought a pipe bomb in because they wanted to blow up a watermelon. The owner told him to leave the store, but he never filed a report. Eric and Dylan would always be playing with fire in the back parking lot of Blackjack. One time they set a dumpster on fire, and the fire grew so high the fire department had to come and put it out. In 1998, Harris and Klebold, who were both juniors at the time, were arrested after stealing items from a van they broke into. They were charged with theft, criminal mischief, and criminal trespassing. Since it was their first offense, they were enrolled in a diversion program, which consisted of counseling and community service. They were released a month early in February 1999, only two months before the rampage. They both received growing reports at the end of the program, with the judge saying Harris is a bright young man that is most likely to succeed in life. But Eric's journal says different. Eric and Dylan started writing journal entries from 1997 to 1999. Eric's were talking about Project MBK, which MBK standing for Natural Born Killers, and it was a secret code word for the Columbine Massacre. Eric also wrote that he wanted their judgment day to be like Duke, Doom, the Vietnam War, the LA riots, Oklahoma City bombing, all in one. He wanted to make a lasting impression on the world. Remember how I said Dylan's birthday was September 11th? In Eric's journal, it also said how he wanted to hijack a plane and crash it into New York City. Which, obviously, everyone knows about 9-11. But the crazy thing is, that was on Dylan's birthday. Also, Eric's journal never talked about love. He wrote and fantasized about tricking girls into his room and raping them. On March 22nd, Eric made a list of things to do before the attack, and one of them was getting laid. He wrote a kill list on girls who have rejected him, and he states, if people would have given me more compliments, all of this could have been avoidable. On April 3rd, his last journal entry, he laminated his inability to have sex. Both of their journals had pictures of swastikas, guns, and gothic creatures. Dylan was actually the one to come up with the Columbine Massacre. He was saying how awesome it would be to sit on the hill and shoot people in the cafeteria. He said it more not so serious, but Eric took it seriously, and then obviously it got boosted to the next level, and Eric became the mastermind behind everything. Columbine was a failed bombing. What they wanted to do was place bombs in the cafeteria and blow it up and hopefully the library crashed in on it, and they wanted to get at least 500 kills. But thank god none of the bombs went off, and we will get into that later. Eric and Dylan had very good grades and had so much potential with Eric was going to join the military. Dylan and Nate Dykeman were going to attend the University of Arizona, and Dylan wanted to major in computer science. On March 25th of 1999, the Klebold family went out there and they picked out his room and even put money down on it. Eric and Dylan would take a 9mm camera and hang out with their friends and just start recording. They made a video called Hitman for Hire. The video was about them killing bullies to avenge the week at Columbine. It looks like a dress rehearsal for what they did on April 20th. 
On March 6th of 1999, Eric and Dylan went to a shooting range called Rampart Range. They were armed with two sawed-off shotguns, a pistol, an automatic rifle, and a recently purchased Tech 9. The range was not far away from Littleton. Who went with them was Mark Mains, who sold them the Tech 9, and his friend Jessica Mitchlich. They started shooting trees and bowling pins. The video is kind of disturbing, at one point saying, Imagine this in someone's brain. Imagine that in someone's fucking brain. And it hurt my wrist like a son of a bitch. A week before the massacre, Dylan turned in a school report that was so graphically violent, the teacher told his parents. The story dealt with a lone warrior wearing a black trench coat who shot college preps, then set bombs off to divert attention of police. On April 17th, a few days before the rampage, Dylan went by limo along with 12 other friends to the prom. Nate Dykeman told reporters nothing seemed unusual, Dylan went with Robin Anderson, whom he met some years before at a Christmas party. They weren't dating or anything. Robin also purchased the two shotguns and the rifle that would be used in the assault. Robin also boasted saying that she got Dylan, who hates dances and jocks, who never had a date, let alone a girlfriend to go with, to the prom. Also five days before the massacre, Eric Harris was denied into the military because he took Luvox, an antidepressant. April 20th, 1999, Hitler's birthday, and it would be Eric and Dylan's Judgment Day. They wanted to plan the massacre on April 19th, just like their idol, Timothy McVeigh, when he went through with the Oklahoma City bombing. Even though they've been planning this for more than a year, they still needed one more day to prep everything. Early that April morning, Sue Klebold heard her son run down the stairs as he yelled, bye, and left in a hurry. At 7.56 a.m., Eric was purchasing the last propane tank for the bombs. At 10.58 a.m., Eric and Dylan went into the cafeteria to drop off their propane bombs. From 10.59 to 11.10, they went to Clement Park and changed out of their clothes into their trench coats, the backwards hat, all ready for the massacre. Around 11.10, Brooks Brown went outside to have his daily smoke, and he saw Eric pull up in his car. Brooks went up to Eric and started cussing him out and was asking why he was so late. Eric said to Brooks, I like you now, go home. Brooks took Eric very seriously, so he left. At 11.19, after the bombs failed to go off, they decided to charge the school. When they started running in, they said, go, 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 followed by gunshots. Rachel Scott and Richard Costaldo were the first to be shot. Rachel died, and Richard was just paralyzed. There was rumors Eric and Dylan made fun of her for believing in God before she died, but supposedly that was bullshit. Around 11.21 a.m., the local police department was dispatched to an explosion being heard at Wadesworth Boulevard. This was Eric and Dylan's distraction to draw police to that area so it would take them longer to get to the school. Three students left the cafeteria. David Rohrberg, Sean Graves, and Lance Kirkland. They went to a place called the Smoker's Pit. When they were there, Eric and Dylan started firing onto them. David was the first to get shot in the left abdomen and fell down. Lance Kirkland was also shot in the face, and Sean Graves was shot as well. Dylan came up to David and shot him point blank, which finished him off. Lance only was missing part of his face, and Sean would be paralyzed, but they would survive. Supposedly, when Dylan was walking in, he stepped on Sean and told him, Sorry, dude. While Sean Graves was getting helped into the ambulance, Eric and Dylan started raining fire on it. While Sean was in the ambulance, he said he could hear gunfire ricocheting off the top of it. Around 11.22 p.m., Neil Gardner, the campus security guard, was on his lunch break. He got a call from the school to head back immediately but he thought there was just an accident on the school grounds. Around that same time, Michael Johnson and Mark Taylor are shot and injured. Around 11.24 a.m., Dave Sanders, a teacher at Columbine, tries to evacuate the cafeteria, and he goes around and warns all the other students that there are shooters and to get out. Anne-Marie Hockholter would be shot multiple times, but she would survive but be paralyzed for the rest of her life. Later that year, her mom would actually commit suicide inside of a pawn shop with a revolver. Patty Nielsen saw Eric and Dylan outside, and she thought it was a senior prank with paintball guns, so she went out there to inspect it. Eric and Dylan shot at her, along with Brian Anderson, and she was struck by flying glass. Neil Gardner finally shows up on the scene and exchanges gunfire with Eric Harris. Neil thought he temporarily injured Eric at the time. 
Eric and Dylan charge into the school. Stephanie Munson is one of the first to be shot, and she is shot in the ankle. Patty Nielsen runs into the library and shouts at everyone to get under the tables. Then she will make the infamous 911 call. Did you see them at all? I saw Eric. Okay. Right before the shooting. Are you okay? Um, I'm like freaking out because he basically handed me my life on a platter. He told me, Brooks, I like you to leave. And I'm walking down the street. Because I don't, I take Eric very seriously as I'm walking down the street. because I start going out. I'm like, okay. I know exactly what their names are, and I've heard them talk about it once before. I know them. I thought they were my friends. Okay. Uh, one of them is named Dylan Claybolt. We got him. How do you spell his last name? Uh, I think it's K L A D B O L D. K L A K L A. Spell it again for me. I think it's K L A D B O L D. I'm not sure exactly. Claybolt. Okay. And the other one's Eric Harris. Okay. They all they usually wear black trench coats. Um, one of them, I believe, has an AK-47. Okay. And another one has a shotgun, 10 gauge, I believe. Another one has a handgun. Okay. Did, um, who's, who's, there's, are there three of them, or just I, two of them? I believe they have those three weapons. Yeah, and I I those two because I hang out with them, and I've never heard about this. I did, did they come My up? son is Eric here, and I'm afraid that he might be involved in the shooting at Columbine High School. It involves how? Uh, he's a member of what they're calling the French Cove Mafia. While Dave Sanders was trying to rush and evacuate all the students, Eric Harris came upon him, and he shot him. Dave was badly injured and would start to bleed out and would eventually die. Dave crawled into a science room across the building. Aaron Hansey was one of the first to find him, and he tried helping him and giving him medical attention. Around 11.28, the police department finally shows up, but no one dares to go into the school because they were never trained for an incident like this. Around 11.29, Eric and Dylan enter the library, with Eric yelling, This is where the massacre will mostly take place, and they will stay in the library for another seven minutes. Evan Todd, who was a jock, was one of the first people to be injured. He was hit by flying splinters from a desk that was shot at. Kyle Vasquez, who was a 16-year-old special needs student, was one of the first to be killed. He didn't get under the desks or hit anywhere because he was too confused about what was happening. Mackay Hall, Daniel Steelton, and Patrick Ireland are all shot and wounded. Stephen Kernow was shot by Eric Harris with his sawed-off shotgun and who would be the youngest victim to die in the massacre. Cassie Ruesugar was shot as well, but she would survive. Eric walked by Cassie Bernal's desk, knocked three times, and yelled peekaboo, and then shot her point blank. He also broke his nose at this time. Eric and Dylan were having a hell of a time. They were hooting and hollering and were so excited by this massacre. Here is some of the audio from the 911 call where you can hear Eric and Dylan yelling in the back. <laughs> Eric and Dylan were making fun of Isaiah Scholes for being African American and they shot him and killed him. Matt Keckner and Craig Scott were also under the table as well. They shot Matt as well, and Matt and Isaiah both were starting to bleed out. Scott would be the only one to survive under that table. Greg Barnes, one of Matt's closest friends, would commit suicide after the first anniversary of the Columbine Massacre. In the library, witnesses also heard Eric scream, this school is fucking dead. Mark Kington is the next to be shot, and he is injured. Valen Schumer and Lisa Kurtzen are the next to be shot by the same bullet, but are only injured. Lauren Townsend is the next to be shot, and she is murdered. Nicole Nolan and John Tomlin are shot next. Nicole survives, but John dies. Eric and Dylan would taunt all their victims, calling them pathetic and worthless. Kelly Fleming is also murdered. Eric and Dylan come across one of their friends, John Savage. John asks Dylan, what are you doing? And then Dylan says coldly, ah, uh, just killing people. Dylan then tells John to run. As the killing goes on, police activity starts to build outside. They can all hear the gunshots going off inside, but police won't enter the building for another half an hour. The library back door was also open as well, so police officers could easily enter into it, but no one does. And the police will listen to all the innocent lives being murdered. Daniel Mauser is shot and killed. Before Daniel dies though, he tried to fight Eric, 
but Eric obviously won. Corey DePorter and Austin Eubanks are both shot. Austin survives, but Corey dies. Dylan comes across Evan Todd, but he doesn't kill him, he just threatens and abuses him, throwing chairs on the desk and shooting bullets. Dylan asks him, why shouldn't we kill you? And Evan said, I've been good to you, I haven't done anything to you. And then Dylan told Eric, you can kill him if you want him, and Eric doesn't kill him either, so Evan survives. Eric runs out of some ammo, and he talks about how hand-to-hand -hand combat would be fun. At around 11.44, Eric and Dylan arrive at the cafeteria, and they wonder why their bombs didn't go off. Eric started shooting some of the bombs and trying to set them off. He set a few off, and they started throwing pipe bombs around the room. They even started taking drinks out of cups. Eric and Dylan go back into the library, and they start shooting cops outside, but no one was injured during this. Around 12.08, Eric and Dylan have finally given up. Eric and Dylan went next to the bookshelves. Eric took his shotgun and put it between his legs, lined it up right with his skull, and blew off the top of his head. Dylan put a Mazatol cocktail bomb right on the table next to him and lit it, and then it exploded as well, causing a fire on the desk. But Dylan shot himself right in the temple with his Tech-9. Dylan didn't die immediately. It was likely that he bled out, and he drowned from the blood seeping into his lungs. After the massacre, there was a number of people arrested. Chris Morris was actually arrested too. There was also three men arrested who called themselves the Splatterpunks, and I'm pretty sure this included Matt Nolte, Matt Akrod, and Jim Brunaiti. I'm pretty sure I butchered those names, I'm sorry. Anyway, they went to Pomona High School, which was pretty close to Columbine, and supposedly they had similar ideas as Eric and Dylan, and they talked about blowing up jocks. At the end of it all, Eric was responsible for eight kills and Dylan five. Columbine would psychologically fuck people up and parents would lose their kids, which would be forever scarring. Craig Scott said he was in a fight with his sister right before she died and he says he'll always regret that. People said they weren't surprised Eric did this, but Dylan was a complete shock. The police raided their houses. They found bombs and ammunition right away, along with his secret journal. His parents have never spoken publicly about the massacre, and they are divorced and have left Colorado. They raided Dylan's house, and they also found his secret journal. And his mom, Sue, said she had no idea he was suffering this much and cutting himself. Unlike the Harrises, Sue came out and publicly talked about this. She wrote a book called A Mother's Reckoning, and even did a TED Talk. After 30 years of marriage, she finally divorced her husband, just because the massacre was too much for them. There was many other books and documentaries and stories that came out post-Columbine. Brooks Brown even wrote a book. There was a book about Cassie Bernal said she said yes, and Eric asked if she believed in God, and she said yes. Later stated she didn't. Eric asked her, but shot her before she could respond. Craig Scott even went to schools to talk about bullying. Daniel Mauser's father wrote a book and also has a YouTube channel where he was the last active a few years ago. During the raid of the house, the FBI would stumble upon tapes. Tapes that would be infamous and would pique our curiosity and would be known as the basement tapes. Only a handful of people were able to view this. It showed Eric and Dylan plotting NBK and talking about who they hate and how easy it was to deceive their parents. The only recording we have of it was by Rachel Scott's dad, Daryl Scott. He brought an audio recorder into the room and he recorded a little bit of it. Here is the audio, it's hard to understand. The FBI released a transcript, but I highly suggest looking at this YouTube video, which was the recreation of the tapes. It's really, really good, and I will put the link in the description. A few months after the shooting, this girl named Brenda Parker said she dated Eric for a little bit, said that they met in the mall in late June of 1998, and Eric and Dylan were trying to flirt with her. Eric and her eventually started hanging out, playing video games, and drinking in the forest, and then eventually had sex. She was 24 at the time, and once she found out how old he was, she stopped hanging out with him. But she posted on a blog saying that she was supposed to be the third shooter, 
And eventually that drew attention to the FBI and police. The police came and questioned her and then they totally found out her whole relationship with Eric Harris was complete BS and she actually never even met him. If any of you guys have ever been on the Columbine Reddit or you're just really interested in Columbine, you've probably heard about Dave Cullen. Dave Cullen is probably the most hated author in the TCC. I have actually personally read his book Columbine, and it wasn't that bad, but there definitely was some inaccuracies. It stated how Eric and Dylan were popular and received little bullying. Eric was especially popular around girls. He said that the whole Brenda Parker situation was all true, saying also Eric was a stone-cold psychopath. Is that 100% true though? He definitely had psychopathic tendencies, but even in his journal it said how he loved animals and he wanted to hurt people that hurt them. He truly loved his country too. Yes, he was obsessed with guns and violent games, but what teenage boy is it? Have you ever heard of Call of Duty? Eric was a pretty much normal kid everyone says, but right around 14 he changed. The school changed him. All the bullying and shit Boba then put up with? He hated the school, that's why he shot it up. They literally were destroying everything, shooting the trophy cases, the lockers, throwing chairs. They wanted the school dead. They wanted to blow up the school. They stated in their journals, if you treated us better, this wouldn't have happened. Columbine reopened the following year, with the cafeteria and library being completely remodeled. There is a memorial that you can go visit, which is a little a ways, but it kind of started decaying, especially after 20 years. Principal Frank DeAngelis retired in 2014. He wanted to wait to retire because he wanted to take preschoolers from the 1999 era and he wanted to wait till they graduated, and they graduated in 2014. During the post-Columbine era, artist Marilyn Manson said his career was hugely affected by the massacre, where everyone was looking for an escape goat, and he was the figure of goth and death, so they all blamed him. So it's been exactly 20 years since Columbine. What did this really teach us? Well, school shootings have still been on the rise. Virginia Tech shortly after, Sandy Hook, Santa Fe, Parkland. These guys all had influences from Columbine. They all looked up to Eric and Dylan. Well, the world is slowly getting out of control. Every school shooter now has fangirls or even fanboys. Nick Cruz has received so many fan letters, including nude pictures from girls. Dylan Klebold even said, I know we will have followers because we are so godlike. Columbine was a blueprint for mass shooters everywhere. Even a computer video game called Columbine Massacre RPG was created, which are Eric and Dylan going around shooting up the school and having to do missions. Hopefully the US can finally get their fucking shit together, but it doesn't seem like that's gonna happen anytime soon. So everybody out there, stay safe. If you're gonna be a future school shooter, just don't fucking do it. Everyone's gonna fucking hate you. You might have some dumbass fan people on Tumblr, but is it really, really fucking worth it?